Hi everyone and welcome to Quilt Stories. Very excited today to be talking to Jane Sassaman, whose quilts I've loved for so long. I love their quirkiness, I love the colour, they're bright, they're vibrant, organic and so it's really exciting to be able to speak to Jane. Hi Jane. Hey good morning to you. Thank you very much. We're going to be talking about one of your quilts, Johnny Jump Ups, which I first discovered when you started posting on Facebook and I know you're pretty pretty good at um, posting your process photos and so I thought it'd be really nice to share them with everybody. So this quilt if you'd just like to tell me briefly where you got your inspiration from. Nature is definitely uh, an inspiration for me. Uh, you know on Pinterest you can save inspiration and all of that kind of thing and you can kind of or I can follow because it's a private uh, setting. All the things that I've been thinking about, plants especially, that I've been thinking about and potential subjects that I want to work with. And that one just hit me and I started to play with it. I remember many years ago, uh, you and I were teaching together at Coffs Harbour. In, oh, in I remember this so well. <laughs> And every morning you used to disappear and, and just sort of walk through the, the bush and, the, and on the beach and um, getting inspiration. And um, I remember thinking how lovely that you must have a, a brilliant collection. <laughs> I'll never forget the huge bat that flew into the palm tree every evening. Yes. And I would stand there and just wait for, for him to come. And the first time I saw him, I was... I couldn't believe it. I mean, it wasn't like a Hollywood, you know, big yes. bat. Big bat. <laughs> They're in plague proportions in Sydney at the moment. Um, in our botanical gardens, they have to find ways to try and stop them coming in because they come in at dusk. Oh. Yes, if you're not <laughs> expecting them. They are very, very scary. It was awesome. <laughs> Great. I'm just going to switch through to our um, to the screen sharing. It's just so bright and happy there. And, and I love the little bees. I think they're great. The inspiration we have here are some of the colour photos. So do you do this for every quilt that you make? I would say that I do. I try to get to know that plant as well as possible. Mm -hmm. I need to know the formula that it's growing by. And then I can play within the formula but even if when you look at the pictures here on the screen look at the different proportions on each picture you know each flower and I say oh this one really grabs me or oh that's not exciting enough and so I'm just collecting and rather than making a you know a photographic portrait I'm more doing a generic abstraction of the best parts of that plant, that makes sense of all. Yeah. And I treat fabric more like paper. To do that, I back all my fabric with an iron-on interfacing. I use a Pella 950F. And so it, it gives the fabric body and stability. So I can cut out any shape and fabric that I want. So shape is really what I'm thinking about all the time. Okay. And, and these are just a couple of sketches that you can see I'm playing with the proportions and the shapes of the petals. Then uh, on the right, some details as well, possible. Okay. And that's the final pattern. The dashed lines. The dash lines is where the fabric tucks under. It's layers of color. There, now you can kind of see some, mm -hmm. some layers happening. So let's just say those top two petals. You've got the background color and a foreground color. And the background color pieces tuck under the foreground color. And that's what that dotted light represents. So you don't have like double thickness or triple thickness happening if you try to keep it no that looks like a blanket stitch or something holding them down is that uh it is a blanket stitch holding them down to me i think you can see on the bright yellow piece there 
that it kind of blends into the blue. You know, it's like little fingers reaching out. Have you stitched okay. and then cut the shapes out? Because that would be quite tricky to do blanket stitching. Well, in, in this case, the pieces with the, the middle petals, where it goes light blue, medium blue, dark blue, those are underneath the darkest fabric. Okay. So it's one piece with the dark blue put on top. So it's okay. the dark blue that's stopping and starting it, not my stitching. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. <laughs> okay. It's, yeah, it's, it's optical illusion. That's clever. <laughs> Crazy, I think. Is no, it is. no, it, it makes sense. <laughs> so we're starting to get into the other shapes. I might have an inkling where I want to go when I begin, but I don't hold myself to it. So basically, I just make initial shapes and then start to play with the shapes and see how they start to talk to each other. So I call it Ouija, you know, like a Ouija board. You yep. Ouija them around and see what happens. And so I tried them, you know, random and scattered and all of this. And suddenly this formality started to happen. Yep. And I do have, I'm afraid, a weakness for formality. You know, I'm an arts and crafts um, <laughs> fan. You quite often ask for uh, opinions on Facebook, which is a very brave thing to do. Uh, <laughs> well, now I know when to ask and when not to ask, but I also know that I'm the boss. Yeah. And people can give their two cents, which is fabulous but I'm still going to do what I think yeah. that I, I have I mean, to do. I guess just sometimes somebody will say something and you'll go, oh, yeah, I didn't think of that. And, you know, just, oh, yeah, sure. That happens too. It definitely happens too. So those leaves are, um, are beautiful, nice and bright. And I just love the motion and it's just it's so organic. I really like that spiral shape. Um, to yeah. me... The spiral is the shape of growth, you know? It's mm -hmm. just energy and self-perpetuating. So it helps me get that idea of life. But what you see in this picture, too, is a little construction paper B. And I always keep colored construction paper around. Mm -hmm. And very often, if I want to test something, I'll just cut something quick out of construction paper just to get a feel for what the possibilities. And that little bee is in my file now. <laughs> <laughs> I can pull them out anytime I want to. <laughs> and so we've got these little five petal, five, yes, five petal flowers. Right. Yes. And so that's forget-me-nots, which mm -hmm. is a lovely little flower. And, um, I learned something by looking at William Morris's work for years and years and years, and something that he does and something I do all the time. Uh, if you have an empty space, put a dot in it. Oh. And that dot can be a berry or a blossom or whatever. Whatever. You go back and look at all my work and you'll see it. I'm just amazed, actually. My husband went for a walk yesterday and we have uh, little libraries. I don't know what they're called, but on people's fences, they put these little libraries and it's free books and you can Oh, yes, in. yes. And he bought me this yesterday. <laughs> that Isn't that a coincidence? Like giveaway? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> he said, I, I thought you might shelf. like it. <laughs> so when you said wow. William Morris, I went, oh, my God. You it's got some good here. neighbors. Yeah. What a coincidence. Your little forget me not to starting to um, create shape um, mm -hmm. and scatter it. And, and bee too. Yes. Now we've got two bees. They're very there. cute. And the forget me nots are settling into place. So here we've got some stitching started. Would you like to tell us about um, how you do your stitching? Yes. Well, first I'll say that when I have everything figured out, either on the table or on the work wall, I make a tracing of the whole design. So it's my blueprint so I can take it apart and then put it back together again. And you can see my blueprint underneath mm -hmm. here. 
this this is just one piece now one one assembled section. right yeah right and i do it basically in sections and on my tracing i'm going to number the tracing from the background up because that's how i assemble it that's how i apply my pieces mm -hmm. Whatever is only touching the background is the number one, and all those number ones go down first. But I've got my blueprint so I know where they go. And then number two layer goes on. And basically, then I'll straight stitch it around the edge, finish it with embroidery, and cut away from behind it. So every big shape that gets applied is cut away from behind reduces the bulk. that means when it's all finished it's basically one layer of fabric and interfacing through the whole shebang okay what scissors do you use to do that or just whatever's around what scissors <laughs> oh my goodness i've got a big collection of scissors and i love my little blunt nose curved embroidery scissors because you know you're not going to cut something that you you know don't want to cut yes yeah. I cut really really close but I've got you know the duck build embroidery scissors it's really what is appropriate for the angle you know that you're working at it looks to me from this photo that it's a zigzag but it's not it's in this case a satin stitch and I do use a lot of satin stitch which okay. is the most mundane mechanical stitch on the planet yes but i'm looking for a real um sharp hard edge graphic kind of look mm -hmm. and that satin stitch <laughs> gives it to me and i also am uh, using a bernina machine with a stitch width knob instead of a button mm -hmm. so i'm changing the stitch width with as I sew constantly. Oh, yes. I can actually see that as we come into points of, of leaves. Right. So yeah. like the big leaves where the leaf is wider, the stitch is wider. Okay. You know, so I give myself a formula. <laughs> I would only get a machine with that stitch width nub. It okay. to me it makes it a little more organic and a little less mechanical. Mm -hmm. I hope that's what it does. And they're obviously good workhorses if they do all that satin Oh stitch. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. So here we are pinning down. So the background is basically complete. Yep. And the forget me yep, so. are on. Sure. We're building from the background. So those flowers are going to be the last things really that get put down. And that is very well basted. That is, that's basting. People yeah. make fun of me on Instagram because I Surely <laughs> I, not. Bas I base the heck out of things. But yeah. I also quilt the heck out of things and um it just needs to happen. But you know they disappear mm -hmm. right away. Because the first quilting that I do is outlining every major shape in the ditch with 12 weight thread 12 so weight. right away half the pins disappear That's so you can see some of that outline quilting in there and that's a 12 weight thread and quite a large stitch by the look of it yes it is and it's fabulous because <laughs> you've been you know so fussy with all the satin stitch and blanket stitch and do, 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 do. and then you get to quilting and I'm using these days like a four and a half stitch length with my 12 weight thread and a 50 weight matching color in the bobbin mm -hmm. and it's chomp 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 it's just so satisfying and it finished the edges so beautifully it does uh you said matching color in the bobbin so you change your bobbin at every time All you change your thread and what um what thread weight in the bobbin same 50 50, 50 in the bobbin weight. and 12 on the top and a 14 top stitching needle background quilting yes 
There's a lot of stops and like starts big, there. empty spaces in the background. So I have to deal with them somehow. And here is a just a quilted spiral that's getting put in. And so I drew the spiral onto uh, golden threads, which is that yellow fine tracing paper, which I use a lot of. I'd never heard of it until I was speaking to another quilter the other day. Oh. I'm now oh, finding that boy. everybody's using it. Yeah, no, it's really great. And uh, that, that way, because you can see that I'm having to start and stop. Yes, a lot. You see that? Because there's a flower in the way or there's a bee in the way. But I'm, I can draw my line continuous so that when I do start and stop, I know it's going to line up mm -hmm. with, you know, the line that just stopped. Pull the threads to the back and bury them until I have taken the paper off. Okay. And know that they're starting and stopping exactly where I want them to. And it um, just tears away, does it? Um, I, I happen to have very high tolerance for mindless meditative work. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, you're perforating the paper. Right. So it t tears. Now, when it gets tricky is when you're using a blanket stitch or a feather stitch, something like that. And then you got to get the tweezers out for sure. In fact, I spent the whole day doing that today uh -huh. on the piece that I'm working on now. You're not satisfied with just the background quilting. You've obviously got some embroidery stitching happening here as well just to add a little bit more dimension so that is quilting and it's stopping and starting anytime you see a stop and start in the thread that means that i'm pulling the threads to the back tying a knot and using an easy threading or self-threading needle to bury the ends so that is as big a job as the rest I got to do it. Interesting you take it to the back. I've always taken it to the front. Maybe I need to take it to the back and that will be better. Oh, whatever works. <laughs> whatever works. Okay, so here we have the final final quilt. Uh, attention to detail is mind-blowing. Blessing and a curse. Yes, I guess so. <laughs> Sitting behind you are some bolts of fabric. Um, they're part of your collection. How many well, quilts? actually, what you're seeing are free spirit quilts rolled up. Oh, okay. It's, I'm storing them there and over there and all around. So you designed for free spirit? For about 20 years now. Hard to believe. <laughs> and I believe you've got your latest uh, set of your latest collection and on your desk with you? I do, and you know, the funny thing is that the fabric that I've designed for years and years and years looks like what one of my art quilts looks like. Does that make sense? But Absolutely. It's printed, <laughs> but it's printed on fabrics, so you have to treat it differently, and all my art quilts are made with basically solid colors. Mm -hmm. We had the whole change of hands at, at uh, Free Spirit and all that excitement and everything. And so I just was waiting to see, let the dust settle and see what's going to happen here. And they emailed and said, would you like to have your own set of hand dyed colors? And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> so this is it. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, there you can see. Oh, they're beautiful. That we're starting with um, 16 colors. It's just a nice spectrum. Mm -hmm. But just like everybody else, I've been collecting hand dyed fabric for years. But there are certain colors that are really hard to find, probably mm -hmm. maybe because they're hard to make. Yep. Um, like good greens. And grassy greens are next to impossible to find. I just did a spectrum with some of those colors that I like to use a lot. Mm -hmm. And if it's 
goes well. We'll just keep adding colors and adding colors. And the nice thing is it's be at your regular quilt store that you can just walk in and get them. I believe you are a SACRA member, Studio Art Quilts Associates. Um, can I you am. just tell us a little bit about SACRA, which is near and dear to my heart, but um, I'd like to hear it from you too. Well, I am a proud member of SACWA, and I remember it from the beginning, uh, going to the Quilt National when people started talking about that. Everywhere I go, I compliment SACWA because they've done such a wonderful job promoting art quilts, mm -hmm. a fabulous job promoting art quilts. Great. and. Um, so would you recommend I'm, being a member? <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Me too. I want to say yes. the art quilts unfolding is just blew me out of the water because it's my history. I mean, when I picked that book up the first time, <laughs> I started to cry because oh. I wasn't the only person looking at Objects USA or this thing or the pattern and decoration movement. It was this thing in the ether. And it's so exciting to see it put in, in record, you yes. know, for me. Absolutely. A mammoth job. Amazing. Yes, I have it on my coffee table and every yep. now and then I just pick <laughs> it up and flick through and it's just, mm -hmm. um, it's, mm -hmm. it's the Bible of the art quilt movement. And yes, it's, it really is. It's great. It's invaluable. I'd like to thank you so much for sharing your quilt with us and your process. I love the detailed photos. Don't quite get them on Facebook. So I've learned heaps today. Um, and so I'm really grateful for that and for your time today. And um, I look forward to seeing your next project. Thank you, Lisa. Okay. Thanks for getting up early. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <I can> <laughs> So if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and do a thumbs up down below. Uh, and that way I will know that you like the videos and I will make lots more. So bye for now. <laughs>